All right, so we have some drawings, and the drawings are going to form the basis for the detailed description. And now we're working on the detailed description. That's the meat of the matter. So the detailed description is going to describe the aspects of your invention in detail so that, uh, you know, you can claim what's necessary, but also you need to describe enough of the invention so that someone can reproduce it from the single document. So it needs to be detailed enough for an engineer, say, to, uh, to be able to build whatever your invention is. Okay, so we'll start with the figures, and with reference to each of the figures, uh, maybe start with a perspective view, uh, label it as figure one, and then in the detailed description, we'll devote a paragraph or two to figure one. So what we want to start with is a description of the device as a whole, how it uh, fits together. We'll start with a description of the device as a whole, so how it fits together. Then we want to go through the components one by one, and we want to describe what the component is, reference it with a reference numeral, and on the drawings we'll have a line to the component and the reference numeral um, that corresponds to the detailed description pointing to that item, and a description of where it's situated, how it's maybe connected to its neighboring um, components, and then later on, once we've, uh, once we've completed describing all the individual elements, we can describe how the invention works and how the elements work with each other to make the, the benefit happen. So for each of the figures, we can have a paragraph describing all the components in the figure and where those components are situated relative to others, what the components might be made out of, if there's anything inventive in there, how they might be affixed to the other uh, components. Some components are removable, some components are, are uh, glued in or welded in or so on. Later on, we're looking at amalgamating the figures and describing how the invention works with reference to multiple figures. So once we've completed each individual figure, we'll describe how uh, the parts work together. And then we're basically done the detailed description. Now that's not to say that it's a straightforward process. There's a lot involved in it. And you need to, uh, you need to be diligent and the, the numbers need to match the reference numerals in the drawings. So I hope you haven't uh, already numbered the drawings because we're going to number the drawings as we go through the detailed description. So they can be, the drawings can, or the numbers can be sequential and can show the various um, components of the invention. Let's get started and I'll show you an example from the coffee press. So here we are looking at the detailed description. Now this is a time consuming process, but I'm going to give you an example of trying to break down this first image into um, a paragraph or two to describe it. So uh, let me give you some structure, just a moment. So what we're looking at here is a perspective view and we can start with that. First to give you some structure, we'll break it down into elements the positioning, maybe I'll make the uh, text a little larger so everyone can see it. Maybe that's big enough. Positioning of the elements and then interaction. This is, you don't have to follow this exactly, but it'll give you a, uh, a structure so that you describe enough features about the invention. Usually what we see when uh, when we look at patents that have been drafted by um, you know lay people, inventors themselves rather than an attorney, um, they're lacking in detail. They're more of a marketing document than a technical document. It needs to be more heavily weighted on the technical side of things. So try to just describe um, all the different aspects you can with regards to each of the elements um, and in later paragraphs, you can describe uh, alternative embodiments. So just to give you an example, if we look over here, there's the water uh, chamber. Well, the chamber can probably have a number of different shapes. It doesn't need to be limited to that shape. So other embodiments may have different shapes for the water chamber, but this one has 
uh, this particular kind of oval uh, shape. So um, let's give some uh, some description here. I'm just going to work away at it and uh, do a bit of a time lapse so you can see me uh, putting together the first paragraph. We're going to always reference each paragraph with the figure that we're looking at. Okay, now you can see we have the first, um, this is the first paragraph here, and what we're doing is describing, first of all, identifying the figure. Secondly, we're describing the major components. So we have the pressure shaft here. I didn't call it a plunger because the plunger is what is within the pressure shaft. So we could just call it pressure shaft. And the coffee infusion component consists of these three major components. Now in the next paragraph, we're going to be looking at breaking down those um, larger components into more detail. Okay, now the second paragraph here, we're uh, discussing the rest of the features and they're not necessarily um, required. So the pressure gauge is probably optional. The valve may or may not be optional, but uh, it's not one of the core features. So we're going to try to set it apart a little bit. Okay, so in this paragraph here, we're looking at um, describing the shape and uh, orientation. So the um, and we're looking at the potential uh, materials, uh, especially if there's anything novel in the materials that are being used. We can describe that uh, here. We also um, want to make sure that the the location of the infusion component at the side of the pressure shaft. It's not a necessity for it to be at the side. It could be at the top or another location. So, um, so that is where the drawings kind of show one embodiment. You want to make sure the draft describes several different um, orientations that your invention might take. As you can see, I also removed the word coffee from here. And uh, that's just, I was thinking it could be used for tea and uh, yerba mate, other types of infusions and so on. So we don't want to limit the, uh, the use to coffee. So we could describe in the beginning that may be used for coffee and other liquids, or we may simply take out coffee and just use an infusion component. So I also mentioned that the water reservoir is a cap in in an embodiment. This is important if you want to make it keep it broad for other embodiments you can describe that it's in a particular embodiment and other embodiments may not have that feature. So in this case here I think the water reservoir is uh, threaded and fits into um, is threaded into the hole so to fit into the infusion component and to describe that. Now the, obviously you can have other um, ways of putting uh, the water in a container and then um, connecting it to the device. So it could be by hoses, it could be by, you know, a, pretty much a closed uh, container that then interfaces and somehow opens up to release the uh, water at the right moment. But as you can uh, anticipate, um, we don't want to limit it to uh, just the cap. Okay, so that's a, that's a pretty good start for for your description of figure one. Now in the remaining um, figures, we're going to be describing some of the smaller components and how they work. I'm not going to go into detail with that in this, but uh, you can play around with your invention and look at breaking it down into, um, ideally you want to have a very concrete idea of your preferred embodiment. And then from there, you can try to be creative and think of other ways of executing the particular functions that you are, um, you're covering off with, your, with the elements that you've chosen. Um, there may be uh, ways that are not as useful as the elements you've 
chosen, but it's still something you want to cover off in the patent in case a competitor sees that you have a great idea and tries to work around. So you want to make it as difficult for them as possible to, uh, to you know, reproduce your invention and, and gain the benefits of it. So, it's, um, so I would start with one specific description of your preferred embodiment and the specific uh, orientation that you have, and then review it several more times and try to uh, broaden and take out some of the more specific words and either lump them into description of a particular embodiment or find better words that are, uh, you know, have a broader meaning while still being specific enough to describe how, how the component works. Now, if you have any questions along the way, or you want to get some feedback on some of the process of the uh, patent preparation, you can submit uh, some questions to me through the, um, through the links down below, or you can submit some of the content to me. But uh, as I mentioned, uh, you know, please keep your invention confidential and don't share the details of the invention itself. Be more than happy to help you with some stylistic tips and so on, though.